Hi all, my name is Arantxa Zapico, and today I'm going to present a joint work with Tala Raffold that is called an algebraic framework for updatable and universal snacks. So since the introduction of interactive proof systems in 1989, a huge line of research has robbed us to what is nowadays the most efficient construction of a snark due to rot in 2016. And when I talk about efficiency, I mean, we have proof system where a prover wants to convince a verifier that some relation holds. And we are going to consider in, in this case, the work the prover has to do in order to convince the verifier, the amount of information they have to send back and forward and the work of the verifier as well. In this almost optimal construction, there is a drawback that is that in order to achieve such sanctions, the prover and the verifier both need to share some information that contains some description of the relation. And this information also has a secret. So whenever we talk about the secret, we talk about a trusted party. Thinking on the applications that SNARKs have nowadays, this condition is highly undesirable. So the community has been working on solutions as multi-party computation, which could be the most natural one. But this still has its own drawbacks. So in a multi-party computation model, Many parties collaborate in order to create a secret that none of them uh, knows completely. So they send messages back and forward. And at the end of this interaction, they have one SRS that stands for structure reference string. And it's this information I mentioned before that both Pro and Verifier have access to. But this SRS is specific for one relation. So this quite expensive computation has to be performed for, for every time we, we need to use it for, for a particular relation. In 2018, Roth et al. introduced an alternative to this model that is the updatable model. Similar to multi-party computation, there are many parties that collaborate in order to create um, this SRS. But in this case, they don't do it interactively, but they act one after the other and compute its part of, of the SRS in a verifiable manner. The output of this, in, of this computation is an SRS that we are going to call universal. Why? Because it will work for any relation up to some size. And then from that universal SRS, we can derivate in an untrusted uh, step, other relation dependent SRSs. Right, so we start from this, this universal SRS this, um, that contains the secrets and then construct descriptions of relations from there. Since uh, the appearance of this seminal work, uh, many constructions of SNARKs that use updatable and universal SRS have, have been done. And the nice thing is that all of them uh, share some common principle which consists in breaking the construction of the SNARK in two steps. First, we work in, the, in an information theoretical object, prove its security, and then by using uh, cryptographic assumptions, finally compile it into a SNARK. This information theoretical object is uh, what we call an holographic proof, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. And the cryptographic compiler is done uh, using a polynomial commitment. All the, cons the, the constructions that we, we are aware of in, uh, in the updatable universal model follow this blueprint. I hope um, we are not forgetting anyone. So what is an holographic proof? I'm here, I'm going to use the notion uh, introduced in Lunar, but with different flavors. Uh, flavors uh, this can, they are called in different ways in previous work. So we have, as always, the prover that is going to be played by the parrot today and a verifier, the vulture. But also we have a third, uh, a third entity, which is the indexer played by the iguana. And the indexer is going to output polynomials that describe the relation. Then prove and verifier will interact. Prove messages will include polynomials as well. And the verifier, rather than having to read these polynomials, will have access uh, or could access to it. So it can query them 
at uh, arbitrary points of their choice and perform degree checks among others. So we want to construct a polynomial holographic proof for proving general relations. What is the motivation of this, of this work? This work is, is meant to break this information theoretical object a bit more. Why? First of all, to extract the main ideas uh, of all these uh, very interesting constructions for two things. First of all, we want to compare, we want to see what is that they have in common, what is that they, their differences, what are the differences, because what they have in common can be a bit more standard. Their difference may work different um, in a different manner for, for a specific relation. So maybe we can, why not combine them? And of course, at the end, the final goal is to, to improve, right? To, to get a most efficient, a more efficient constructions. So for that, let's start from the beginning. And um, we want to prove general computations that we can model as empty problems. And in this talk, I'm going to consider circuit satisfiability. Why? Because it has a very like uh, a very nice representation. An arithmetic circuit uh, have three types of gates. We have multiplicative gates, additive gates, and gates where the inputs get multiplied by constants. And for the first one, we capture them in a set of quadratic constraints. So if we can label all multiplicative gates from one to M, what we are going to require is that the left input of uh, gate I times the right input equals the output of the gate. So we label with A the left inputs, with B the right inputs, and with C the outputs. Then to capture uh, both additive and multiplicative by, by a constant gate, we'll use linear constraints. So every input will depend uh, on previous outputs and some coefficients that describe the, the circuit itself. So if you remember what to say about the SRS, the intuition is that quadratic constraints are the same for every circuit of size M. Every circuit that has M multiple because it's great, we have the same set of quality constraints. But linear constraints include some uh, constants that describe a circuit. So this is why we need to derivate the universal SRS into a specific one uh, to generate um, a, a something description of the circuit because these constants uh, are not uh, something general. So algebraically, the proof wants to convince the verifier that there is an assignment that satisfies um, a specific circuit. So what the prover wants to show is that for some vectors A, B, C uh, of size M and given matrices F and G that describe the circuit, two things happen. The first one is that the Hadamard product between A and B equals C. So this entry-wise um, product includes all the quadratic constraints and then that some, re some linear relation holds between matrix F and G and the vector of, of the witness. Basically, what the prover wants to prove is that A, B, and C are in the orthogonal space to this matrix W, generated by the rows of this matrix W. Why? Because if, if you see what this matrix, this equation is saying, this uh, matrix vector product is that element I of vector A equals a linear combination between vector C and the constants of row I uh, of matrix F and uh, similar for B and G. So let's see about this uh, a bit more in detail. How can we prove that uh, the vector ABC is um, in this subspace? Well, we could take every row of W and perform an inner product with a vector of the witness and check that all of them are zero. But this will require to prove two M relations. And uh, we are pursuing sunksiness, so this is uh, far from, from optimal. But thinking in an algebraic manner, what we can do instead of checking one vector against every generator of a subspace, 
we can sample one random element in that space by using a random a coefficients and then just check one in a broad. So our prover wants to commit our verifier that the circuit is satisfied. It has to prove the Hadamard probe. It, it has to prove also the inner probe equals zero uh, between A, B, C, and some random vector. So that's in the world of vectors and matrices, which is nice and intuitions can very fast. But then we had to move to the world of polynomials. So for that, we are going to define uh, a set H of size M, where M is a, is a number of multiplicative gates uh, inside our field, and then define the, the Lagrange polynomials. So lambda i is the polynomial of, the, of degree M minus one that vanishes at every point in H, but H i, where it takes value one. And Tx is the polynomial that vanishes at every point in H, and there where it says Rj, it's supposed to say Hj. And now we have a natural encoding. We take a vector of size m, and then we write the linear combination between this, this uh, the element of this vector and uh, the Lagrange polynomials. The, the output is a polynomial y that when we evaluate it in Hi, give us the ith element of Oy. So, um, so far so good, we have the intuition uh, of how to prove circuit satisfiability in the algebraic world. We have the tool to move to polynomials and now let's wrap up a bit what we need. So we need um, to sample, very, prove and verifier need to sample uh, this vector D and then compute the its encoding as, uh, as polynomial. And then from the encodings, of the vectors of the witness and the encodings of, of the vectors that, the, that generate D, two things have to be proven. First of all, that the Hadamard probe between A and B equals C. And there is a pretty standard way to do it when we work with the Lagrange polynomials. We can write it as a divisibility problem. So for example, here, the prover will send polynomials A, B, C, and H. H1, and the verifier has to check that basically A times B minus C is divisible by the vanishing polynomial. And then also the prover has to convince the verifier that the inner product between this uh, random vector D and the vector of the witness is zero. We present uh, a scheme for this inner product relation in our paper. I'm not going to get into the details, but it, it has a very similar structure to the to the Hammer probe uh, scheme. So the prover wants to commit the verifier of this, and we already know how to perform Hammer probes and inner probe. How the prover can show to the verifier that these two relations are satisfied. So the quadratic relations and the inner relation, the linear relation is divided into steps. One of them we have it covered, which is the inner probe. So we had to focus on how to sample this vector D and compute the encodings. This, two, this last step is what we are going to call a checkable subspace sampling. So the prover has to sample this vector D because we cannot ask the verifier to do it. It will, it will take a linear time. And then it has to prove it to the verifier, prove the correctness of the sample. So to sample, we need a vector of size 2m. And because the, the prover is trying to convince the verifier, the prover cannot choose this coefficient. It cannot choose the vector in, in the row space of w that is going to check against the, the witness. But the verifier, we don't want it to send 2m uh, field elements. So we, we solve this problem by including in the description of the relation, some vector of polynomials alpha. This vector of polynomials, you can think it as um, the monomial basis or the Lagrange, uh, the Lagrange polynomials for a, for a set of size 2m. Then the prover is going to evaluate this vector of polynomials 
in one element. So we will get two uh, M random coefficients. But the point of evaluation will be sent by the verifier. So the verifier sends just one element, and the prover uses it to evaluate two M polynomials and generate um, the randomness that it's going to use for the linear combination. And then it performs the, the sampling itself. Now, next step, how do we get the encoding of vector D? We already know how to find vector D. So for the, uh, the encoding of vector D, what we want is something like that looks like this. Because D has size 3M, we need the Lagrange polynomials uh, that interpolate some set of, of size 3M as well. And, and our encoding is, is of this form. But what is D? What is vector D? What are the elements of vector D? Well, vector D is a linear combination between the rows of W and, and these alphas. So we patch all these rows in just one vector, and then we will use the Lagrange polynomials to batch the columns, so to batch the elements of, of vector D. But at the same time, these alpha coefficients are evaluations of polynomials in some point Y. And if you think this is the natural encoding of a matrix, it's like we compress all the rows with some set of polynomials, all the column with another set of polynomials, and then in order to recover an element in W, we basically play some naval bat. So D at the end is a partial evaluation of a vector, sorry, of a polynomial that describes matrix W, a polynomial that naturally encodes it. This may seem as already a solution, but here we have a, a problem and here is where we need to focus on, this is the bottleneck of all constructions. This vector W has two variables with independent degree M. Of course, the verifier cannot evaluate it. It will take quadratic, um, quadratic work and we don't want it even to be linear. And we cannot include it in the, in the relation dependent SRS because we will need from the, uh, the universal SRS to be quadratic, to include all the combination of powers between X and Y. So the, the goal is to find a way that the verifier can, can partially evaluate this polynomial and prove its correctness. Or maybe not partially evaluate it, maybe evaluate it in two variables sent by the verifier, but then prove the correct evaluation. If matrix W is dense and it has a quadratic number of a quadratic in M, a number of non-zero elements, this could get super tricky. But um, there are some assumptions we can make in the shape of W and previous work made them and they are super fair assumptions. We are going to talk about that in a, in a while. So to prove circuit satisfiability, we will start from a checkable subspace sampling. It has the structure of an algebraic holographic proof. And then recall, we add the inner product relation in order to prove the linear constraints. And then we add the, the, the Hadamard product relation in order to finally prove circuit satisfiability. So this is how we break the, the information theoretical object. But for time constraints, I'm going to focus only in the first primitive, the Chekhov's space sampling, which is our main contribution. So, because it has the, the structure of an algebraic proof, polynomial algebraic proof, a polynomial oleographic proof, sorry, we have the indexer that performs uh, in an offline phase some computation to output polynomials that describe matrix W. Then, in an online phase, proof and verifier will interact in two steps. The first one is to sample. So, the verifier will send um, the challenge. Uh, y, and the prover will reply with encoding of the vector D, it's a it sample uh, according to Y. And then the prover has to convince the verifier that this sampling has been performed correctly. At the end, the verifier accepts or rejects uh, depending on whether DX uh, has been correctly computed. 
So again, this is a, the first step to construct a, a SNARK, an update on universal SNARK. And it's implicit in all previous constructions. That's, that's the core of the work, this work. So in Sonic, it's called, it's implicit in the signature of correct computation. Uh, the partial evaluation of, of this bivariate polynomial S is indeed a sampling uh, in, the, in the rows of the matrix that describes the, the circuit. Then they present two constructions. In the Sangsin construction, they assume that W can be written as a sum of a permutation matrix, which is a fair assumption, and the complexity depends on how many matrices we need, uh, how many permutation matrices we need to compute W. And then they present an amortized checkable cell space sampling that is unrestricted, makes no assumptions on the size, on the, on the structure of W, and is super efficient. In Malin and Lunar, uh, they use a very, a very smart encoding of sparse matrices that is, uh, that is presented in Malin, which is again a fair assumption because what they assume is that the amount of non-zero elements is actually linear in the size of, of the circuit. Um, the, the protocols are super efficient, but they have um, quite a, a large SRS. In our work, we first uh, start from this algebraic intuition and, and create an CSS that is um, inspired in the van der Mond assembly, which is not very efficient uh, by itself, but it works very well with dense uh, rows. So because this is linear algebra, we want to sample uh, a vector in the row space of a matrix. So we can use one CSS, for example, to, to work with the dense um, rows, and then if the rest of the matrix is sparse, why not to use Marlin or Luna? We also present um, a construction that is inspired by Marlin, but is uh, generated from simpler building blocks and uh, comes out to be, to be as efficient as the best construction in, in Lunar, but uh, with, a, with a smaller SRS. And then in an extended version of our work, while trying to, to include Plunk in our, in our framework, we, we combine somewhat the ideas uh, of Lunar um, and Plunk and came out with, a, with our best construction that considers uh, circuits with limited fan out. Again, a fair, a fair assumption in the applications of SNARKs. To wrap up, why to use CSS, why to think this um, information theoretical object, this holographic proof in, in this way? Because decomposing uh, the construction of a scheme in many steps is always useful. Also, it can with, with an algebraic intuition that we, I think we all feel comfortable working with, like it simplifies. And then the framework itself captures several constructions. I would say all of them in the, in the extended version of our work. And this CSS is the bottleneck, is what all these constructions differ on. It's where the smartest idea came uh, on the table. So isolating it will allow us to, again, compare, combine, and then improve. We know, we know where to focus. And, I, and as I mentioned before, then we can uh, mix these, these works. So that's all from me. Thank you for listening. I hope this was useful. If it, if it was not, please don't hesitate to contact us or if you have any doubts on, on our, of our results. <laughs>